Hi, I'm Nathan Savoy. I'm a writer, performer, and full-time professional DM. Yeah, I run games for clients all over the world, from England to the local queer inclusion night at my game store. Um, I've been playing for about 15 years, started during 3.5, have been loving 5e, took it up in the pandemic to keep friends close together. I have an undergraduate degree from Hampshire College in stand-up comedy, poetry, and storytelling, as well as a master's degree from NYU in narrative game uh, writing, sort of studying games and how they're written and, and how that kind of storytelling works. So this is obviously my passion. I love this. The idea of doing this is cool as hell. Uh, so here's the worst joke ever. Uh, it goes like this. A man breaks into the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Yeah. Sneaks in, gets past all the security measures, gets past the alarms, gets past the cameras, gets past the guards. Sneaks in, goes right to the gallery of Impressionist masters. Quiet as a mouse. Gets in there and with a little blade, cuts about 14 paintings out of their frames and sticks them into tubes. He's brought tubes for the occasion. And he takes those tubes and he goes out to his getaway van that he's got parked outside and he shoves those tubes into the van and he gets in the front seat and drives off speeds away into the night, no one any the wiser. It takes about 45 minutes for the police to cotton on to what's happened, but once they do, they are out in force. It's all over the city. And they assume they'll never find him, but they do. They find the guy. He's parked on the side of the road, four blocks away. So naturally the cops get to him and they say, what, what happened? They've got him, they're interrogating him, they're bringing him into the little seat, they got him a little light over him, like, what happened? You just conducted the most audacious art heist in history, and your car ran out of gas. Ran out of gas. How? And the man, matter of fact, he shrugs, looks at them, and just says, Nah, it's simple. I didn't have the money to buy Degas to make the Van Gogh. And that's the worst joke I've ever heard, and I love it. Our story begins nearly a century ago, when a conglomerate of wizards took up residence. <laughs> Our story begins nearly a century ago, when a conglomerate of wizards took up residence in what has now been christened the Cold Fire Caverns. Through their unsanctioned meddling with the arcane arts, they produced many wonderful things, but also many dangers. You see, on the day that a single spell went awry, it shook the structure of the caverns to its core. And while the wizards themselves were trapped, it is said that a terrible threat was born that day in the heart of the caves. Something that is now ravaging the surrounding countryside with greater and greater frequency and ferocity. But what was it that was unleashed on that fateful day and how will it be stopped who will rise to the occasion and what will their legacy be what pathways will open and how will they lead to the heart of this forsaken labyrinth it's time to find out at the 20 sided tavern Okay, so for a character, I'm going to use the GIF, our nice big hippo boy with the, the uh, gun. And um, I'm going to introduce you to Frank Collado. He is a GIF rogue who subverts some popular roguish stereotypes and is a runaway ice cream salesman. So here we go. Here's Frank. Hi. Uh, Frank Collado here. I'm the uh, general manager of the What a Davy and Gelato Grotto. I'm an ice cream salesman. I was an ice cream salesman. I Turns out, <laughs> the What a Davy and Gelato Grotto, yeah, it was a front for the Zentrum. You know, Zentrum, Black Network, real scary guys. So uh, I've never had a, a pluck of conscience in my life. I was a normal guy. I went to town. I, you know, I'd give to that, went to a block party occasionally. I got a wife and kids. It doesn't matter. 
What matters is that one night I went into the back room and I saw our owner, who's a Zen kingpin, important guy. He was doing something. I I can't tell you about it. But what, what matters is that the next moment I'm holding this gun. I don't even, I've never seen a gun before. It goes off. I've shot him. He's dead. I'm holding a literal smoking gun in my hands. I paid him. So I did what anyone would do. I burned the place down and I ran for it. Didn't even tell my wife. Didn't tell my daughter. I just ran. I didn't want them to be incriminated. And so I, I ran for it. And uh, I ran up and down the Sword Coast. I worked as a caravaneer. I, I stopped at every wayside temple. And I'm not... I'm not like other rogues. Uh-huh. I'm not some trained assassin. I can't pick locks. I, I don't even seduce anyone. I'm married. My parents are alive. I mean, they're getting older, but they're alive. But a few months ago, I fell in with some adventures. Thought I'd give it a try. I was alarmed, I tell you. I was alarmed to discover that every single one of them had committed plural murders. Plural. Surely once is enough. But I'm getting better. I am. I'm getting better. I'm taking to it a little bit. I can fire the gun now. And I hit things. And, and I almost never vomit when I'm scared anymore. I am still scared all of the time. And that's Frank. Thank you so much. Um, I'd love to do this. It's like a dream come true. So hope I hear from you.